Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to go over how to start from a list of Sales Navigator contacts, move them into a clay table, and ultimately enrich them for more account level information as well as persona information, find their work email address, and then push all of that information into a workflow inside of your outreach account, your instantly account, HubSpot, whatever you might want to push that information into. And so a couple things that you'll need, you'll need a Clay account already to get started, as well as the Clay Chrome extension. All you need for that is to uh, Google Clay Chrome extension, and you'll find all of that information there uh, for you. And so here we're going to start with a sales navigator search. And in this sales navigator search, uh, we are going we have just put company headcount 11 to 50, geography United States, and then I just put the seniority level to be the owner. Uh, if we wanted to put any other filters on here, of course, we could still do that, uh, but it wouldn't really change our search that much. So what we can then do is open up the Clay Chrome extension. And with the Clay Chrome extension, it is collecting all of the information on here uh, that we possibly can get our hands on. So we have the name, the company, their location, the title and company, which is important, their sales nav profile link and their sales nav company link, if it's available. Sometimes different information populates through. So now if you'll notice, we had see all five rows in here because there was five available on the page. So if we just slowly scroll through, we will continue to collect more rows. See how we're at CL 15, 18 rows, and that's loading. And now we've got 24, and now we've got the 25. All of the pages have 25 rows. So we'll just click on the next one. And we can just kind of start scrolling through, and it'll start collecting all of that information that is on the screen as well. And we'll just see that number keep going up. Absolutely. And we'll just stop at two pages to just grab 50 as a good example. So once it says see all 50, perfect. Now we're gonna click add to workspace. And when we add to the workspace, it's gonna open up a new tab and we will jump over there. And now we have the new tab of everything that we just collected from the old search. And so you'll see that we have a lot of this information here uh, that was from the table, the name, the company, their location, their profile picture, title and company, sales nav profile link, all of this really good information, right? And so the first thing that we would want to do is we want to enrich this per this uh, sales nav profile link for more information. Now to get started, first we need to have a conversation fundamentally about how the product works. So as you'll see, this is the spreadsheet of the table that we need to be on. Now we have a couple different options when we want to add a new uh, column to the table. We can click the plus button and we can either enrich our data, which is the same button as this. We can send our data, which is the same button as this, or we could add any of these other columns. So what we want to do right now is we want to enrich our data from the sales nav profile link. So we'll just go to enrich person from LinkedIn profile. These uh, is all the integrations sorted by category. You could also sort them by provider. I highly recommend just checking out all the providers we have and thinking of all the creative ways that you would use them personally. So we're going to click on enrich person from LinkedIn profile because it's right here. And we are going to enter their LinkedIn profile. Now this is a sales nav profile link. So we just, we can't just enter the sales nav profile link into the LinkedIn profile. We actually have to add it into this one, LinkedIn sales navigator profile, because that will get us uh, a far better match. And so then we'll hit save changes. And now we're just gonna hit run. And so a couple things happened. A enrichment column came up and it was blank. What you have to do is you have to hit the, the play button here to actually get it started. Because sometimes when you're setting these things up, you wanna just check if the enrichment is working correctly. You might not wanna run the entire thing. In each individual cell, you have all these play buttons that you could touch upon that you could run individually before you get the entire thing started. So now uh, if you want to look at any of the information that we found about these people, you can hit view details on the cell. And this is all of the information that this particular enrichment has returned. Again, I highly suggest checking out our other integrations and just seeing what the return information is, seeing what the input information is, just so you have an understanding around uh, what you would need if you want 
uh, a particular list to be done. Or if you, for some reason, want to know, oh, I wish I knew how many jobs somebody has held in the past. Now you know, okay, the clay enrichment has this as an output, and I'm going to go use that right now. So all we would do is we would, again, just click on any of their names. You don't necessarily have to click the expand button here and you could see all of the information. Now from here, if there's anything that is important that you want uh, on your table, all we have to do is we just hover over one of the things that we want to map. We'll hit map to table, hit create new column. And now this is going to create a new column for us that is going to include their location name of everybody who's listed here. You don't have to go one by one. It's going to be everybody who's listed in that uh, particular cell. So now when you export this table using this export button, you will uh, get everything that you see here, but you will not get all of the data with nested within these uh, within these rows over here. You're just going to get what you put onto the table. So that's an important thing to note. Now, the next thing that we, we might want to do is we might want to enrich their company for uh, how many employees they have or, or different things like that. So if we go to company LinkedIn URL, notice that we have our inputs here. We can pick any of the inputs that come from the table like we did when we put together enrich person from LinkedIn profile. But now that we have something that's enriched, if you see this drop down arrow, you can actually hit the drop down arrow and then we can see all of the information that's nested within that integration and we can pull that into our input as well. So there's two ways of doing this. We could either take the enriched person from LinkedIn profile, map the LinkedIn company URL because that's what we're going to use right now. We can map the company LinkedIn URL to the table or we can jump into the nested information and we could find that and see we have the company LinkedIn uh, URL right here. And so we're just going to click that. And then we'll hit save changes. And now we will enrich all of these as well. And we'll just hit that play button. And we'll just let it run. Now you could also see that some of them, we could just spot check run by using the uh, play button within the cell. But we could also just hit the play button on top to run everything. Now, while that's running, you'll also see that in this output, we get a lot of great information like their company size, their the type of the organization, when it was founded, what industry are they in, what's the locality, all of these things. One thing I'd like to call out is this number is a self-reported number, this two to 10 employees. That's what they said that they are um, when the owner was filling out the company information. But if you go to the employee count, uh, I find this to be a much accurate number because this is actually all the people who say, hey, I'm an employee of this company and I'm putting it on my profile. And so we see they have one here, even though they listed two out of 10. And so oftentimes I use this one as a much better range than, than the other ones. Uh, so now what we're actually going to do is we're going to map the domain because what we're going to do is we're going to find their work email addresses from here as well. So we've mapped the domain and to find a work email address, all we need is their full name and we need a domain to map that with. So we'll hit enrich data. We will, for now, we'll hit by provider and we'll go to Clay Enrichments and we'll click find work email. So here, we're just going to take their name and we're going to take their company domain, which we've mapped straight to the table and we're going to hit save changes. And now we will run this. This is going to find their work email and these are already validated email addresses. So if you think that the count is a little low, just remember that these email addresses are already coming pre-validated with about a three to a 5% uh, bounce rate. So uh, if you're comparing this to somebody like an Apollo or, or like Lead IQ or Seamless, just think about all the email addresses they give you versus all of the ones that are actually validated when you go through that. So these all come pre-validated and we're starting to get some emails together. And now the next thing that we would just need to do is we need to send our data. So if you want to send your data, all you would have to do is you could jump in and you could see all of the companies or the integrations that we have that we can add uh, information to. Uh, so let's say we pick instantly, we would just open up instantly and you would pick one of your campaign IDs from the campaign here, and that will uh, add your prospects to that campaign ID. So uh, what you need to do is you need to start the campaign and in instantly first, and then you need to jump in and uh, add them to your table here uh, so that you do have a campaign ID. But now all we would do is just simply map everything that the campaign would need, right? So we need the email. We need the first name, which we could actually get their first name from their LinkedIn profile here. Um, it's in here. 
we would get their first name, last name, company name, personalization, anything that you might want to add in, any custom variables that you might want to add in as well. And then all we would do is we would hit, uh, if we picked a campaign, this would say, to save our changes, we would save our changes and then we'd be able to run and send all these directly to an instantly campaign. Now we also can add things to Google Sheets. We can add things to HubSpot, Airtable, Salesforce, Outreach. Uh, there are other integrations that are being added shortly as well. And so this is the way that you would go from a list of Sales Navigator profiles all the way through to enriching for their names, their company uh, information, their email addresses and things like that. Now, if you have any other questions, you can always join our Slack community at clay.com backslash Slack, where we can answer all of your questions for you uh, more immediately. And if you want to do any more custom things, a lot of the users are in there and you, they can help you out with it too. Uh, and with that, uh, let me know if you have any questions.